Remember that really uncomfortable Sunday school story about the woman who was a sinner who washes Jesus' feet with her hair and an alabaster ointment? Um, it, it's almost hard to teach anything less than PG-13 to kids uh, because it's not too hard to put together what kind of sinner she is that has everybody so upset. And it's also not too hard to figure out how some of them know that she does that kind of work. I'm just saying. Uh, we know how she raised the money to buy the ointment that was used to wash the feet of the Lord. We don't actually hear how it is that the Pharisees recognize her and her profession. But uh, Jesus just tells her, your sins are forgiven in the face of the Pharisees who would hide their own sins. See, to Jesus, it's not whether or not the ointment was bought with illicit funds. He doesn't measure sort of the source from which we offer our devotion, but the object we offer our devotion towards. This woman clings to Jesus for hope, for mercy, for forgiveness, and she finds it. The Pharisees who make their money in ways that are upstanding and then spend them in ways that might not be. The Pharisees who do not uh, worship Jesus, they are not they're, they're not satisfied by this story, but for us, it actually lets us confront the real words of Isaiah who tells us all our righteous deeds are as filthy rags. For us who know deep down that so much, if not all, of our best efforts, of our, of our hard-earned money is tainted by sin. By the times that we have not worked as hard as we could, by the the times that, that we have been disrespectful towards those who are set over us, by the times we question our very identity and whether or not we have, because we sin over and over and over again, ever been worthy to actually kneel before the feet of the Lord and receive his forgiveness, he answers to us, your sins are forgiven you. This woman is not an, uh, a, a token object that says it's okay to sin, but rather your sin is forgiven. Those are two very different things. The ointment is no longer the, the measurement of, of how much she loves Jesus, but it's rather how much Jesus loves her that is the thing that we can hang on to. Uh, the reason that she has this devotion is not simply because she is a better character for being a bigger sinner. You see, it, it's still measuring the people, the source, instead of the object of the devotion when we do it this way. Rather, she has been forgiven much. Of course, she is more grateful. Jesus tells a parable to the disciples in the very face of the Pharisees and, and recognize the one who has the greater debt will have the greater gratitude. So this woman who has stood at the very, very black and looked back into the light recognizes just how far she has fallen. And of course, she rejoices to be near to the light, the truth, the way, Jesus. It's not that uh, she is the better Christian because she has been the bigger sinner. Again, stop measuring the source. It's about the object. It's that she is the one looking to Jesus for forgiveness, life, and salvation, and that is enough. That way you don't need to be the biggest sinner so that you can have the, the biggest uh, once was lost and now I'm found amazing grace kind of moment. It, it, it's not that you have fallen too far to ever be redeemed. It's simply, where is Jesus? And he is near to sinners to offer forgiveness for you, for me, for her, for all.